Welcome. Today we have an opportunity to have another expert to interview as part of our Learn From Professionals. Uh, as, the, as, as a component of the Young Professionals Career Engagement Program. So we're excited today, Mr. Bart Combs is the founder and president of SOCOA Inc., a discrete mid-market security firm that has trained and prepared more than 24,000 at-risk travelers from the public and private sector in situational awareness personal resilience and security and self recovery. A 20 year veteran of the US Army, Mr. Combs has been an Army warfare survival, evasion, resistance and escape, which is SEER instructor since 1985. He retired from the Army as a special operations command as a Lieutenant Colonel. Uh, Mr. Combs was recognized as the Army's most senior subject matter expert in global personal recovery and SEER, having developed numerous training programs and contingency plans for the highest tiers of the Department of Defense and its strategic interagency partners. His operational experience spans 37 years across six continents both on the ground as well as special operations rotary wing and fixed wing pilot. He is a distinguished graduate of the Virginia Military Institute and US Army Command and General Staff. He also holds a Master's of Business Administration degree. He started his company in, in 2005. He's had 17 years experience running it. So welcome, Mr. Combs. Thanks, Scott. So we're, uh, we appreciate and want to thank you for your willingness to share your expert advice with our viewers. As we discussed, our goal today is to provide guidance to young adults that are either exploring various careers or are ready to jumpstart a career in a field. So today we're going to talk a little bit about your military experience and also your experience in, in running, running a business. So uh, Bart, can you please tell us about your career path and what's helped you to become so successful in your business? Well, I would say uh, the career path as you, as you laid out started with uh, VMI, uh, a rather unique uh, institution in and of itself. And I would say, uh, although it was designed uh, has military in the name and you think it's like our federal academies, West Point, Air Force Academy, Naval Academy, but really its job was to create uh, citizen soldiers and uh, leaders, you know, in their uh, communities and civic organizations as well as military when needed. And I think that that perspective already puts, uh, you could wear many hats, uh, but what it did have uh, first and foremost, because uh, it's put out uh, such graduates as uh, George C. Marshall, known more for the Marshall Plan than known for and his military also made five-star general, so successful on both sides. But the bottom line is that uh, the ability to, to get through a place like VMI is a lot of rigor. So, and that's, if anything, I would say of entrepreneurship, of military service, one thing you're going to face is a lot, of, uh, a lot of challenges and obstacles. And so to that alone, I would say VMI, regardless of the degree, was uh, instrumental. Uh, and any institution like that, um, there are other ways, but anything that has rigor uh, is going to prepare you well for what's just going to come down the pike and you would be able, being able to adapt. And so I, I appreciate that. So what made you decide to go into the Army? I had uh, at a time when I was uh, figuring out what I wanted to do. Um, I had some mentors that were uh, of military and they were specifically not just military, but they were from the Special Forces uh, community Green Berets, as, as they are known, and so Army Special Operations, and I was intrigued. I did a lot of outdoor stuff uh, as a kid, and enjoyed the outdoors, enjoyed the adventure, and everything I heard from them was that, hey, this is a profession that'll give you plenty of adventure, sometimes more than you maybe bargain for, but anyway, <laughs> um, I was intrigued, and I, and um, one in particular who uh, had a, a, a big influence, you know, as a uh, 
uh, a father figure. So I, I, those mentors really guided me into even looking at a place like VMI and, uh, and then going in the army. And as I would go later, uh, cause I also rebranded, not rebranded, I guess I re, uh, you retool yourself and you'll do that in, in entrepreneurship. And I did it in the military. I didn't just have one branch. I started in infantry. So I was airborne ranger, did all those kind of things on the ground, followed by becoming a pilot, as you mentioned. So I flew, saw it from that side. And, um, and then I went to special operations. And so the special operations piece was putting those two together and, and doing it now you're with, you know, you're with an elite tier. And, and so a lot is asked of you and you're constantly um, learning, growing, developing. And that's exactly what you do in entrepreneurship. So I think if anything, my special operations time, as it does for a lot, help me, um, uh, help me take on that accountability, uh, I guess, for uh, not expecting things to be done for me. You don't have a big army and all that infrastructure, but you get in special operations in smaller groups and and you just learn to be a little more self-sufficient because uh, uh, you have to be. And that certainly so, helps entrepreneurship as well. Sure. So after 20 years in the military, you decided to create, to, to found SOCOA. What is SOCOA? What is, what is that name? <laughs> we get asked that a lot. Uh, it's a uh, contraction of two ancient, uh, or a, a combination of two ancient world languages. So uh, first part is Latin, uh, contraction of the Latin word solus, uh, which means alone or isolated, like the word solo. So that's sold. And then the, uh, the other half is uh, on the other side of the globe is the ancient Polynesian word for warrior, Hawaiian word for warrior, koa. So soul koa is the, uh, the lone warrior. Uh, for us, that's our main client, the isolated uh, soldier for our, when we do our military training, uh, but also anyone. Um, and, you know, figuratively, uh, whatever you're out there doing, your, your mission set, your sort of fighting in a way, but not in a kinetic way, but rather you're just fighting for what you, you want to do. And you have to do that within the conditions that are there. Mother nature uh, you know, puts you in situations that alone could be challenging. And then you throw in, uh, well, in the business world, you've got competition and you've got other things where people want to uh, not help you, not, you know, those. Uh, so all of that is in many ways, it, it you feel a bit, um, alone. Uh, so, but that doesn't mean you have to be lonely. That doesn't mean that, you know, it's just that, again, you take on a greater accountability when you have to, to carry these sort of things. And so I think it's a, a little double entendre there of, of both who our cu customers and clients are, as well as who we are at, as a, you know, as a company and what we're trying to instill in many of our customers. So Bart, you founded SoCoa in 2005. You've been running the company for 17 years now. Has it just been a straight up um, trajectory for your company or, or has there been some ups and downs? Uh, oh, well, as in any journey, you're, you're going to, and I think you would know this, uh, it's never the hockey stick and the pro forma thing that you would do in business school. Um, I believe it was Eisenhower's quote, uh, that uh, you know, in planning for war, that he found plans uh, useless, but planning, you know, the process of planning indispensable. And of course, what he means by that is that you can have the greatest plan in the world, um, but uh, it usually doesn't survive first contact. Um, and then are already you're adapting and you're doing audibles right. on the fly. It, there's many uh, other parallels in sports and other places. So. But the, the time you spend in planning and all of that's going to be indispensable because you are going to. And yes, we, we grew. And for a while, I was really, you know, you can get overly proud of yourself when you do have a, a steady state for a while of constant growth. And I kind of did until I didn't, about the 10-year mark. And you mm -hmm. think by then, well, man, if you've gotten past those first four or five years of the small business failures that they talk about, you, you must have it all figured out. Well, again... Uh, fate and other things have a, have a different plan. So uh, we sure. got we got really uh, crushed and had to retool. And there were about four years that were very lean. And uh, but in doing that retooling, like anything, you get stronger through those crucibles. And uh, now we're as large as we've ever been. We've made Inc. 5,000, Inc. 500. I mean, we're growing really fast. And I'm not going to rest on my laurels, though, that it can't happen again. So you need to always be prepared. Um, it's easy to look back and see how you got where you are. Um, but it's never the way you could have ever planned. So just mm -hmm. go forth with eyes wide open that it's, it's uh, be prepared to, to adapt 
<laughs> so one of the one of the things that uh, what I'm getting from our conversation here is whether it's military or let's say homeland defense or or the private sector. One of the things that you do is help people to be aware, situationally aware of different threats, and then uh, how to adapt to those threats. What 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 are the things that you should be doing? What's the timeline? So, yeah, so that's great. So, Bart, what did you what did you consider in your military career to be the greatest rewards and challenges? I think, uh, well, certainly the, the 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 type of work and working with the people that you're working with that are committed um, to the level and and they're committed to excellence. They're committed to the mission. They're committed uh, and. They are, I mean, if you're wanting to be of a team of like-minded people, that, then that's, you're, you're with the people that you have wanted to be with. Um, so, and I know there's a lot of military uh, formula who, who can miss those times. They, they find, uh, I know a lot of military, when they come out, sometimes feel like, well, now they're off. I, I don't know if you maybe played professional sports and you're on a team and then suddenly you retire and now you're, you're left floundering. And so, um now, part of my military career, again, I said I had to restart a few times, and I'm not by rank, but certainly the, the, uh, the, the specialties and things. I had to learn stuff all over again. But that's a good, sure. that's a good training field for what you'll do in life. And and uh, and in this day and age, you know, certain businesses or even uh, markets can suddenly disappear. And now, but you've trained yourself, let's say. So the ability to to pick up and learn. Um, and and be willing to start over again because that's something hard to do too. It's a you got to there's a humility there that you've got to mm -hmm. be humble to start all over again. Um, but know that you can and and trust me, I think it will it helps you um, have a breadth of experience that will help. I never would have assumed that a lot of the military things would be as applicable as they are. But I constantly reach back. I find myself reaching back to seer type things, which you would akin to living in the woods and starting fires and that kind of stuff. But you know what, there's a lot of metaphors. That's why outdoor education has been used for years uh, as a leadership uh, foundation or, or a crucible, uh, because you can learn a lot from that that then you can apply to business, you know? So to be mm -hmm. self-sufficient, uh, to not put out more energy uh, than, than you can take in, that's cash flow. I mean, there's a lot of parallels that I found and, I, and uh, it's kind of neat that, that, I, that, that that's uh, come about I never would have known that at the time. So um, in any case, the military, the other part was the autodidactic thing. You're gonna have to teach yourself. And for graduates coming out, new graduates, they've, it's been form they've have been carried through an educational system that's there for them. As they go forth in life, uh, they gotta create their own. And a lot of that will be training themselves for what they wanna do, especially if they're starting something new, blue ocean strategy, that kind of thing. So. Uh, I would just say, learn how to let you, you've kind of learned how to learn in a structured way. Now you're going to need to learn how to learn as you go forth right. constantly and never settle that you've got it all figured out. Because the more at, at my turning 60 this year, I'll tell you, I'm still figuring it out. And I also know how much I don't know at this point. <laughs> well, you look amazing for 60. So I know you, you work out and you stay busy. So that's great. So, um, so Bart, from what I'm hearing from you, the military helped you to uh, be situationally aware, to be able to overcome adversity, and you found that those skills that you live in, that you learned in the military help you in your role as the founder of SOCOA. Absolutely. No, absolutely. Okay. So Bart, what, what would... Uh, what do you believe to be the characteristics of the, the most successful leaders in business? And, and I, know that, um, I know that you do a lot of reading, you're, you're a history buff, but uh, keeping it short, what, what do you think helps, helps a person that uh, is, wants to start a business and, and needs to move forward? I would, th I would say, um... Uh, starting with yourself, uh, first off, to start a business, I mean, you have to start with your own. What's your drive? What's that passion? What is your why, as it's as it said? Mm -hmm. You really, now, not that you can't look at businesses and, and find things that might be, oh, this is the greatest new thing. This is going to be where the money's going to be made. 
you can do that. Um, franchises that are well known and well established, it's there are some aspects of that that are easier. But one thing, my perspective is first off, without that passion, when it gets hard and you hit those challenges and obstacles, you're going to question yourself of what is it worth it and all that kind of stuff. And for the sacrifices you make, if it's not at your core of just you, you feel like you can't breathe, if you can't do this, um, I, I just really think you're, you're going to wrestle much harder than having a passion, now it's a two-edged sword, but having a passion that you really is who you are. It's just, it is in your soul and it's what you're here to do uh, to help, you know? And uh, so I would start with that. And you need to, you need to do that, that, that internal look first. After that, um, and then and knowing what your strengths and weaknesses are, and be sure to work on those weaknesses first. Um, people work on strengths, but I would just, any strength overused is a weakness. So be work on your breadth and fill in your own gaps. And then uh, through that process, you start looking at others, like Strength Finder is a good book. Um, and you start looking because you're going to need to build a team um, and in uh, anything. And so those that are successful certainly build great teams build systems. Um, and so, you know, I can give some recommendations later of certain books and things that I would say for us, especially for entrepreneurs. But um, that would, uh, that's what I would say is because you're going to go fast first by yourself. And, and that's fine. As the saying goes, uh, if you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, go with others. And so <laughs> you're going to have to build that team. And, yeah, and so, sure. yeah, and so that's that next step. But those who are successful build world-class teams. So Bart, I know that you're an army veteran, but if you have an individual that's interested in exploring a, a career in the military and isn't sure if they wanna go into the Air Force or the Army or the Navy, um, Coast Guard, what advice would you give them? Um, I, you know, I would, uh, almost all the services to some degree have um, have a little bit of everything. I mean, you know, it's like there are, there are if you think the Air Force is where all the jet pilots are, well, uh, Marine Corps has jets, the Navy has jets, mm -hmm. Army less so, we fly a lot lower. So, you know, it's helicopters and some rotary wing or uh, some fixed wing uh, short takeoff landing, but you're flying much closer to the trees in the Army. But in any case, um, but there's there are the similar jobs, special operations, every service has a special operations thing. So the question would be, uh, it could be as even as simple as, well, where are the bases? Where, where would I be stationed? Uh, in those, you know, it could be that. Um, so, but I would go back to that, your why, what, what connect, what do you connect with as, as a culture uh, with any particular service, but you can find, um, I think you can find your, uh, what your passion is in almost every service. So I don't want to, I, I will, I will remain agnostic on, on which service is better, but, uh, but yeah, ask yourself what you really want to do um first before making a commitment like that because it is a commitment you know even sure. to do a four-year stint and i and i didn't want to leave out the space force um soon yeah. we'll have yeah. an opportunity to uh, to interview someone in the uh, space force so um what about if somebody's interested in just running that business themselves they they, they got this great idea they want to move forward with it they're uncertain about how to do that. What advice would you give that that entrepreneur that uh, that is looking to to lead out on his own? Well, that's um, yeah. It, it, well, once you have the idea or or that what you want to do, because to say I just want to run a business, well, you know, then it's what I would certainly do the first step first. Then. Um, I would submit that there's a lot of free resources that I, I sometimes are overlooked. Mm -hmm. And uh, despite, yes, I, I did get a, a master's in business, but, uh, but different than my other formal education at the baccalaureate level, which was much more unique at VMI, it was, um, it was more, I would just say it was very constrained to almost working in business, not necessarily starting a business. And when you're starting a business, that's an entrepreneurial thing. And yes, there are business programs that focus on entrepreneurship, but there are many that don't. So, um, but with entrepreneurship, you could go into many resources of free, small business administration, SCORE, Service Corps of Retired Executives. I mean, many of these things are free. You go into those places and you see people who don't have degrees, not even, no, nothing, 
And yet they're going to start a business, a, a small, simple restaurant, cl you know, a cleaner, a something. But they're and, and many of them, I was, you know, you might be surprised you go to some places and you'll see how many people are have uh, are are immigrants, uh, first generation, you know, uh, mm -hmm. or first generation. But they're very and, and they and because where they come from don't have as much of a job infrastructure, whatever. So if they want to. Uh, survive in some cases, much less thrive, they have to start their, they have to create their own job. They have to create mm -hmm. their own company. And so they come here in the land of opportunity and they run with that, but that's what yeah. they're there. And what I don't see, what I didn't see, interestingly enough, were college graduates of any, mm -hmm. and I was, a, I already had a master's degree and yet I'm there and I learned loads at these places. So I would submit, don't, don't overlook those resources because that's where you really get those, especially those initial uh, parts of starting a business to the technical aspects. Sure. So you mentioned, uh, uh, you talked a little bit about some of the uh, periodicals, but, but are there any websites? Are there any books? Are there any periodicals that you would, uh, that you'd recommend that people, people access in order to understand what it takes to, to run a business? Well, not specific to security, then I would say, because uh, I had those as well. But in the case of, of entrepreneurship, I mean, even, you know, entrepreneur, uh, all of the websites, entrepreneur.com, um, they'll do, you know, you're, you're, they're going to point to some of the things I'd already said. Um, and there's articles in there that cover a, a wide range. Um, Inc. Magazine sometimes does as well, but those are businesses that are already existing. So that I would leave that um, uh, maybe a little bit later. And then there are certainly plenty of blogs and, and, and that kind of stuff, because then I would align once you're figuring out what you want to do is because, yes, to start a business, the physicality of starting a business, to, I, you can do it in an afternoon because it's getting an EIN, it's getting a, a uh -huh. name, find your, find your website.com. Uh, That's why Solco was fine, because we could get those six letters together and nobody had it. So that was nice. But but in any case, it, that's not hard, but that's not really starting a business, you know? And, and so, um, so I would say juxtapose what you wanna do, that do both is you're gonna have to, uh, the balance of entrepreneurship that's generic and applying entrepreneurship, let's say, in the industry you're picking. Um, because that's, because in some ways you need to study that about what, what's the marketplace like? Are there opportunities? What are the comp, what's the competition like? Are there niches in there? Is there a niche I could pick? And I would tell you, I just as a, a word of advice, narrow your niche at first. You can always expand. I know they say divert, uh, you know, be diverse and have, um, uh, you know, have some optionality. Uh, that's a big thing in business, like contingency in, in our world. But but the bottom line is, when you're starting out, pick a lane and and really uh, own it. Be an expert. And and uh, and maybe you can really carve and, and be complementary, so you're not going head to head with uh, big companies that are already out there. That that's um, so. That's just some advice I would give. Of, of you need to really do both, but look at it as to what how you want to approach a, a uh, the marketplace. Don't just assume I have to start something like a Facebook. I have to start something like Windows. I mean, you you know, it's not the right. way to go about it. So so Bart. Um... We talked a little bit about balance in life, and and the importance of balance. And you uh, you had a very distinguished career in the military. Now you're now you're running a very successful company. What did you do for balance when you uh, when you were in the military, and what are you doing for balance now? What's well, um, like anything? I would just say that. Uh, where you have to lean in. Um, first off, I would just say that the be here now. Um, so when you're doing the, your, your focus on your job and starting a, a company, especially, you're going to have to focus so much of your attention and, and pour your, you know, everything you've got into that at the at, at, and, and there'll be a lot of hours. That being said, um, balance for yourself first is that you got to keep yourself up. You can't drive yourself into the ground so that you can't physically, mentally, uh, emotionally, spiritually, uh, uh, keep up, uh, you're going to need to replenish. Again, this, the survival, uh, you know, sort of analogy of saying, and if I just 
you know, burn myself out and I'm not taking in food, water, you know, and sustaining my, myself at rest, then I'm not going to be fit enough to be able to continue to do this or be effective. When you bring others in the mix, now you're married, you, you started a family, now you've, you've brought others and you need to be a part of, and you are now, uh, you have another hat you're wearing, you know, as, as, as a spouse, as a parent. And so, um, yes, and, and in the same vein, when you're there, you need to be here and you need to be with them. 100% into the business when you're into that. And when you're with family, you need to be there, not just distracted all the time because that's out of balance. And so mm -hmm. for the long run, keep that balance, understanding that, or if the timing would be such that, well, I'm still single right now, well, then you could lean in a bit more, but don't, don't also don't, just don't negate self-care, just like don't negate family care. Okay? Sure. So, so Bart, you have a successful company that you founded and you're running. How important is networking to, to running a, a, a great company? I think it's uh, well. It's highly, uh, highly important, um, and something I was probably late to pick up on. Uh, one thing about entrepreneurs, you tend to be, well, I can do this. I'll, you know, if it is to be, it's up to me, and and you kind of get that lone warrior sort of thing. You can take that to a, an extreme in a bad way. Uh, you need to network, and you need to work with others, and both to learn uh, as from a mentorship perspective, and um, and I will say, so what I what I did. Um, Besides like joining professional organizations, especially coming out on the commercial side outside of the military, um, because the military is one of our bigger clients, I kind of knew that community. I didn't know these others. So you have to kind of work around them to understand their lingo, kind of their culture, uh, you know, what they're about to, to be able to interface with them. Otherwise, you, you, you look like a foreigner in a way. I mean, just that you're you're not part of our clan. And so. Uh, that's a big thing. And also I join, so both, there's a technical aspect of joining professional organizations, let's say within the field you're in. And then the other one is to join entrepreneurial ones. So now you've got things like, uh, you, this is once you're into business for a while, uh, could be Vistage, could be, there's different ones, a CEO, I, uh, there's different groups that basically, because being an entrepreneur or a business owner, it's a lonely, can be a lonely thing. You got your family mm -hmm. support, you know, if you're, but, uh, but it's to understand and have some that you can share with other peers, you've got to create that. And there's some out there and you can create them on your own with just finding those in your local area. So that's a good thing because you can both, uh, you can kind of create your own board of advisors through something like that. And you're going to need that at your level, not just your own team, that's different, but they're looking to you for leadership. Um, and you can certainly uh, work with them but also you need to work with other business leaders who are dealing with high level, strategic level things, especially as you grow and you're, and you're going into air, you're always going into areas you've not been yet. And right. so you do that with, so the best way you can do and have a little better sense of confidence is to have, create yourself your own uh, board of advisors. Officially. Sure, I love that. Or unofficially. What, uh, what advice would you give to a young adult that? It's thinking about different careers, really uncertain about the direction that they want to go with their life, and they're just exploring different areas. What advice would you give them? That's one of the, I mean, self-knowledge and, and knowing because it's, um, and, and here's what I would say first. You don't need to, just because you pick something, as I'd said before about, you know, you may retool yourself completely. So what you may do for the first four years may not be, you don't know yet. So, you know, give it some time, but at least spend the time of, of just searching your own. What makes you just get excited to get up in the morning and go, you know, yeah. so many, unfortunately, you know, going to work or whatever. And it could, you don't have to start a business. You could go for, to work in a business that's related It's where you get a lot of experience. You know, I didn't come into the military and immediately lead. Uh, I mean, not at higher levels, I'm still learning. And, and so uh, the Strengths Finder, the MBTI, you can do any of those kind of things at Myers-Briggs. Uh, try to figure out what, what, where are your strengths and then align that with, and, and what then in those books, and sometimes they'll say, well, with the, somebody with these kind of strengths would be good at this. Now you might find, well, yeah, that, would, that sounds interesting to me. But if they have a list of things that might be, well, great. I'm very, very good. And I'm gifted <laughs> by a book sure. or a system. 
at something that I would not really enjoy. So, so now they've so yeah. now they've uh, they've they found that that niche that uh, that area that they'd like to explore. Maybe they've gone in, they've got that academic training, whether it's trade school or or getting their undergraduate degree. Now they're ready to start their career. What other advice would you give a young person to to have a successful career? We talked about situational awareness, which has to do with perception. Here's what I would offer. Look at changing your perception and how I would say that you would do that. I want you to look at stuff as a producer and not a consumer. And here's why. Uh, especially kids who've grown up and as kid, uh, uh, that young people who grew up in America who are you know are of this country their entire life and and because it's different than, than than those who come from emerging or developing nations or you know studied in America but aren't from here you've spent your entire life uh, subjected to a consumer to an obsession level a consumer based society high just consume 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 and and with that comes a an expectation. There's a normalcy bias so that things are going to be there. Things will be on the shelves. Jobs will be available to me. I've got the qualifications. Boom, I'm here. I just exchange. If you look at it as a producer, whether you're going to start a business or not, but I'm a producer, or it's just same as like when you go out in the woods, I'm a rescuer, not a rescuee. You mm -hmm. just flip the script a little bit. And, and, it's, and we're very adaptive in that way. The brain is. But the, if you go into a job interview or those things, or even starting your business, you're, you're going to be a producer of goods and services of some sort. So you, you already have that mentality. But even if you're just starting a job, you go in with that, not that you're going to change the company you're going to work for, but you go in and, and you're talking with whomever as somebody who's going to bring value to that company, you know, and what you can do to produce and how you believe that your strengths would be, you know, uh, it's I, maybe a little semantic thing, but I'm just saying so many come in as a consumer. I have this. It should be kind of mine. And, and I can just sort of buy in this case, you're buying it with a degree or I'm buying it right. with my pedigree. And I'll just say that's um, I would just submit that little paradigm shift. Think of and, and, and use that in life, too, as a producer, not a consumer you're going to go farther better <laughs> mm -hmm. um, than maybe at the majority of, of, uh, of Americans. And it's not their fault. It's nothing. Uh, it's just because we are just so inundated by it with in media and everything. So I often, I often, when I'm consulting young people, I say, you know, put yourself in the, in the position of the company. What can you provide for that company? That's what they're interested in when they're interviewing you. It's not what they can provide to you. Right. That might that might be part of the equation, but it's really about what uh, services that you can offer to that company and, and meet the needs of them. Absolutely. So, so Bart, I want to thank you for your time today. You've um, you've been awesome. You you have a lot of experience both in the military and as a business owner, and uh, I I know that that young people will benefit from listening to this interview. So to wrap up the interview, I, I just want to remind our viewers that uh, what we did today with, with Mr. Combs is an informational interview. Uh, you can reach out on your own to successful business leaders and schedule an inter informational interview with them. Um, on our website, there is a video that uh, gives you instruction on how to do an informational interview. So again, Mr. Bart Combs, I wanna thank you for your time and your efforts and, and you're an amazing guy and, and a, a wonderful business leader and a great family man. So thank you very much. Thanks, Scott.